Okay, so first of all, the data I have here is compounds that were measured in air samples that were collected in 2016. And I want to plot these compounds to compare them to each other and look for correlations in the concentrations. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert a bunch of blank cells in front of my data. Then I'm going to select a blank cell over here and go to data and data validation. And then in the validation criteria, I'm going to allow only values from a list. And then for my source, I am going to select my list of compounds. So I'm going to select the first compound and then hold down control and shift and right arrow to select all the compounds. Then I'm going to press enter and OK. And then if I go back over here, you can see I now have a drop down box with my list of compounds in it and I can select any compound I want. Now I am going to add a fill color to this to make it more identifiable. Then I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. And now I have a second drop down box. Now in this area over here, I am going to create a dynamic table and I'm going to type X axes and Y axes. And then in this cell here is going to reference to this cell here. And this cell here is going to reference to this cell here. And then I am going to copy all of my dates and paste them in here. And then I want this area of the table to be filled up with the concentrations from this main table. And I want the concentrations to match whatever the compound is in these cells. So I'm going to do this using a formula and it's going to be equals index and then the array is going to be the whole of my table. So I'm going to select the first compound again and then hold down control shift and right arrow and then while I still have control and shift selected I'm going to press the down arrow to select all of my table. Then I'm going to select the array and I'm going to press F4 to insert the dollar signs in front of my cell references so that it doesn't move around when I click and drag the formula. Then for the row number, the 16th of March is in the second row in my table. So I'm going to put a 2 here and then I will come back and fix that later. Now the column number is the interesting part and this is going to be another formula and it's going to be a match formula. And in this case the lookup value is going to be this value here. And I am going to press F4 again until the dollar sign is in front of the 1. So I can drag this formula down without the number changing. Then the lookup array is going to be my list of compounds. So I'm going to again go control shift and right arrow. And then I am going to press F4 to select my list of compounds. And then I want an exact match. And then I am going to close brackets and then close brackets again and enter. And now if I select a compound down here, which is close to the beginning of my table, you can see that the value changes here and then this value matches this value here. Now if we have a look at what the match formula does on its own, you can see at the moment it's giving me a value of 1. So what this formula is doing is it's looking up this value here in this list of cells here 
and then it's telling me what position that is in. So at the moment, it is looking for C2, F6, and that happens to be in position number one. So it's giving me a value of one. However, if I change this to the next compound, it is giving me a value of two now because this compound is in position number two. Now, if I click and drag this formula, you can see that there is a problem with this formula because it's still the same number. And that is because I have this row number here, which is just two. And in order to fix this, I am going to add a new column here, which is just going to be a series of numbers starting at two and going to the end of my table. And now I can change the formula. So the row number is whatever this cell is here. And this time I'm going to press F4 until the dollar sign is in front of the L. So I can drag the formula into the Y axis and it will still work. And now when I press enter, I can click and drag this formula and the values change. So now when I change the compound in the drop down box, the compound in this cell changes because it is referencing this cell here. And then all of the numbers in the table change because all of these formulas are referencing this cell here. Now, the final step is to add in a char. So I'm going to insert a scatter plot. And then I am going to add data to this. And my series name is going to be correlation. And then the X values are going to be these values here. And then the Y values are going to be these values here. And now I have my table. And at the moment, I am plotting the exact same compound. So I need to change this to get useful data. And now you can see I have a correlation plot. Now I am going to change this chart type to a template I made earlier in order to get the formatting I want. And now I am going to change the axis title to be whatever this cell is here. And I'm going to change this axis title to be whatever this cell is here, because I want both my axis titles to be dynamic as well. Then I am going to add in a trend line. And then I am going to select the trend line and press Control 1 to open up the trend line formatting. And I am going to add in an R squared value then I am going to increase the size of this to make it easier to read. And for those of you who don't know, the R squared value is a measure of the correlation between two series of data. And the lowest an R squared value can be is zero. And then the highest an R squared value can be is one. So any value of 0 0.9 or greater is considered to be a good correlation. And at the moment, you can see this isn't a good correlation. But if I pick two compounds that I know have a good correlation, for example, CSC113A, and then chloroform, you can see these two compounds do have a good correlation, which is greater than 0 0.9. And this is showing me that when my air samples have low concentrations of CSC113A, they also very often have low concentrations of chloroform. And then when my air samples have high concentrations of CSC113A, they also very often have high concentrations of chloroform. And this is an indication that these two compounds are being used in the same industrial process, or at the very least, they're being released in the same area.
So I can use the drop down box to select whatever compound I want to look at the correlations between different compounds. And I have over 50 different compounds in this main table. And if I were to plot every single compound against every single other compound, that would be over a thousand graphs. So using a drop down box is a much more time efficient way of doing this. And just to remind you, to create this drop down box, you need to go to data and data validation. And then in the validation criteria, allow only values from a list and then select your source values. Okay, and that is it.